Um, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like the majority of my life is a fight. Um, I wake up in the morning and I fight my alarm clock. I go to my closet and I fight my wardrobe. I go in the bathroom and I fight myself to get in the shower because adulting. Like I, ugh. And then I, I fight myself to go to work and I, I fight with my children to get them to eat vegetables and I fight with my husband when it's time to pay bills. And I, like, I, I just sort of feel like a lot of my life, and maybe it's just this season, but I feel like a lot of my life is spent in a fight. Um, and as I was thinking about that, what I realized was the majority of my life is actually spent in a fight with myself. It's mostly an argument with me. And I, I wish it weren't that way, but it is. And I actually think the fight leads to growth. I actually think the fight that I'm fighting with myself leads towards holiness. But it's still sort of a fight for me a lot of days. Just doing the normal day, everyday thing in the spirit of the Holy Spirit, in the spirit of what we're actually supposed to be doing this life in. And um, I, I wish that, like, I wish that life with Jesus was like, you know, like a bar graph. And I wish that it started down here and just went in a straight line, straight up. Like, that's it. I'd, like, that's what Christ likeness looks like. It just, you just go straight for it and it's done. We're good. All right. Phew. Easy. But it's not. Like, I feel like my life with Christ and I feel like most of the people's lives that I know of that are with Christ looks more like kind of the stock market. Like, there are general trends up and down. Like, it just kind of goes up and down. And sometimes there's a good market and sometimes there's a bad market. But, like, in general, it kind of trends upwards. That's what I feel like life with Christ is for most of us. Like, a, a sort of a stock market thing. Like, let's just move towards more towards Jesus. And some days it's a little harder than others. But we will get there in the end. And there are days, for me at least, when I just keep thinking, Lord, I don't want to fight. I don't want to try. I don't want it to be hard. I don't want to do this thing because it's hard. And then I know those are the times when I actually have to haul myself before the Lord. Especially when I don't want to. Because the more I trust Jesus, the more I win. The more I actually believe what he says about me, the more I win. The more I don't hear what the, what the world says about me. Because the more I listen to Jesus, the more I know what he says about me, the more I win. The more I grow in intimacy with him, the less I'm swayed by the world. That's how navigating our journey works, right? Like when we walk towards Jesus, we actually win this fight. We win this battle that is against us. And the beautiful thing is when we are engaged in the fight, when we are engaged in this journey, when we are actually have our eyes wide open and we are engaged with Jesus, with the Lord, the people who are going to come behind us, our daughters, our young adults in our core, we pave paths for them. That's a huge part of the reason why I get up in the morning and I haul myself before God. I think about people who are coming behind me and who have come behind me. And I think about myself at a younger age and I remember not knowing how to navigate this journey. That's, I love that question, how. How do I actually navigate this journey with Jesus? It's, it's one thing to say, I want to go deep with Jesus. It's another thing to actually know how. Like, okay, well, how do I put legs on that? How do I walk this out, right? And for me, it comes down to two things. Being in community with Bible-believing Christians who are actually in the Word as well. And that means that then I am showing up with them, and I am letting them love me, and I am loving them. Jesus said in the Gospels, he said, the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and the second is like it. We love our neighbors as ourselves. And sometimes when we show up with our neighbors, it means we actually listen to their rebuke. It means we actually listen to them. 45, over 45 times in the scriptures, there are verses that talk about how we one another one another. We submit to one another. We confess 
confess our sins to one another. We love one another. We greet one another with a holy kiss. And yet, so many times we don't actually know how to do that. So I'm telling you today, like when you get into community with people, when you get into a loving community, it looks like you're with people who aren't like you. It looks like people who aren't necessarily as educated as you, or maybe they're more, just more faithful than you, or, or they've gone before you and you want to walk in that path, right? So that's what it looks like to be in loving community. And that's part of how we navigate this journey with Jesus. And then the second way we navigate this journey with Jesus is we practice spiritual practices. I remember when I was first starting out, when I was like in my early 20s and I was really searching for how, how do I go deep with Jesus? How do I do this thing with the Lord? I would, I didn't know how. Like my leaders kept telling me, read and pray, read your Bible, pray. And I was like, that's a really big book. I don't even know where to start. And then I felt really silly praying because it felt like I was just talking to myself and like there was no relationship here. And everybody kept talking about a relationship with Jesus. But then I remembered when somebody actually sat down with me and taught me how to practice Lexio Divina, which just means sacred reading. Like, I think that's just, we Christians love to make up fancy words for things. It just means sacred reading. It means spending time listening to Jesus talk to you while you're reading the Bible. And then I remember somebody teaching me to use my sacred imagination when I prayed. Holy cow, I heard from the Lord all on my own. It didn't come from a pulpit. It didn't come from my pastor. It came from the Lord himself. That set my world on fire. That's how we navigate our lives with Jesus. We, we practice solitude. We practice silence. We practice margin, ladies. Anybody practicing margin? Rest? Play? Sacred reading? Study? And I feel like when we put on those practices... We need to remember that it is just practice, right? So many of us come to the table and we're like, we're going to get this right this time. And then we, if we don't get it right, we just move on. But like practice is just that. Like you can't get practicing with Jesus wrong. Like if you can look at it like that, if you can look at coming to spiritual disciplines, like they're just practice and it's okay. And my life will be different tomorrow and maybe it won't. And that's okay too, because I'm just going to keep journeying with Jesus. I'm just going to keep asking him to help me know how to navigate this walk with him. And I feel like when we do that, when we get in community with each other, when we actually allow people to speak into our lives, right? When we, when we say, I'm really struggling today. I need somebody to speak truth over me because what I'm believing are a lot of lies, We learn how to look like Jesus and we learn how to navigate that path. And then when we actually begin to practice spiritual disciplines, when we when we put on those spiritual disciplines, our lives start to transform and they start to go towards true north because that's our journey. That's where we want things to take us. And then the world doesn't even get to touch us. It doesn't get to affect us because we are practicing our spiritual disciplines. So in Ephesians 3, Just this last thing. In Ephesians 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. When we can get together, when we, when we root ourselves down into a faith community, right, we learn how to love. We learn how to love well. This verse says, it starts with love. And I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, and it ends with, may grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And then there's that little phrase right in the middle that says, together with all the saints. We don't get to do it alone. That's not how this journey works. It only works when we are practicing, listening to Jesus, and we're in community with each other. Amen.